Well, hello there, and welcome to a bumper edition of What's the Word in Association with Ladbrokes. I'm Tom Malone. I'm joined by Gavin Lynch, uh, Patrick Mullins as well, special guest this week, and of course, David Jennings, as always, in beside me. Uh, looking forward to a brilliant weekend's racing. Just a reminder as well, we do have a comments competition with a 100 quid free bet, courtesy of our sponsors, Ladbrokes, up for grabs. That's for the biggest price winner uh, in the comments section, and get those in early as well. Uh, we're going to do two shows this week, and we'll be looking forward to Saturday first, and then later on, we'll be looking forward to Sunday as well. But first, First of all, that's what a weekend in store. I think I'm going to have to sedate you first, and we'll just ask, we'll ask Patrick, how has this, this build-up been for the Dublin Racing Festival, Patrick? It's been huge. I mean, I think it's a fantastic initiative. It's one of those ideas that you wonder why no one thought of it before, uh, like all great ideas. And the racing, the, you know, the racing, I think, will stand up to anything that happens in Cheltenham. Yeah, absolutely. David, there's been quite a bit, a lot of build-up to this, but it's finally here, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just laughing at your sedation quote. I think we might be talking about sedation later on, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, I actually, I, I, I don't claim to come up with the idea, but I did do a column on it a long time ago, suggesting something similar. Really? <laughs> yeah, I can okay. back it up. I'll find that article. Okay, yeah. yeah. But, uh, sure, it's fantastic. All these grade ones, all the best Ireland has to offer. It's just as good as it gets. Yeah, absolutely. And Gavin came skipping into the office this morning as well. Just looking forward to the first race of the day on Saturday. Patrick, a couple of runners here. We've got uh, Cara McKay and uh, Fabulous Saga. What do you make of them? Yeah, I mean, Fabulous Saga seems to have been transformed by the application of a tongue strap. Um, you know, he'd run away during the summer there, and he seemed to have got to kind of a plateau was form. But his performance um, in Cork uh, was extraordinary. He won by something ridiculous, some ridiculous margin. And then he showed a fantastic battling side to him in Limerick at Christmas when he seemed to get headed and got back. So he obviously stays very well. Um, he's obviously dropping slightly in trip. It's two miles six as opposed to three miles. And the ground in Leprosan would be better than it was in Limerick or Cork when it was bottomless. The ground in Leprosan is always, it's the nicest ground in the country throughout the winter. It's very well drained. So whether the less emphasis and stamina will really pay, play to his strengths, I'm not so sure. Um, but he has the form in the book. Uh, which is why Paul has chosen him, whereas Carter McKay is a horse who's, you know, maybe more potential. Um, he's stepping up significantly in trip. He had a very good run over two miles behind Gettabird at Punchestown. And David Mullins was quite sweet him after that. He said, once this horse steps up in trip, he'll be much better. Um, he's won around Leperstown before, so he should be able to handle the ground. I won a bumper on him at Christmas last year. Um, and there mightn't just be as much between them as the prices suggest. So we're expecting two big runs. Good stuff. Uh, Dortmund Park actually tops the market, David. What, what do you make of this race? Yeah, it sounds like you would have given the choice of ridden Carter McKay, would you? I don't know. Um, like I said, yes. it's tricky. Um, you know, Fabulous Saga has, has the form in the book and has far more experience, but Carter McKay is an unknown how much he'll improve for a step-up and trip. Yeah, I, I don't really fancy Fabulous Saga. I think he was he did well to win, I thought. Last time um, as he, at Limerick, he was headed and he came back. That race fell apart a little bit. Um, Manila Fair got a cut and just wouldn't be a race. I, I, I'd have a strong gauge of the form. I, I don't know. I just think it was a race that fell apart a little bit. I would. I, I think, like Patrick, I think Carter McKay will finish ahead of Fabulous Saga. I think Dortmund Park is the most likely winner because he st he's a strong stayer who seems to be getting better. And that was a good performance last time. But... His He's, form isn't good enough. I yeah, mean, his form is... I mean, do you take the thirdest run at, at face value? I mean, run at Quagmire. But let's be honest, but it's probably the worst grade one of the, the weekend. Like, do you know, it's probably not going to take much winning. I Possibly, but I mean, he's been beaten in a maiden hurdle. He fell in another maiden hurdle. Mm. So you're going on one run that would run around a swimming I think throw. he's the most likely winner, but he's no value. I think the only horse I can see a little bit of value is potentially Dicey O'Reilly, who beat Bally Ward, beat Someday... It was a good maiden hurdle, I thought. I know the last hurdle was omitted at, at, at uh, Christmas, but it looked a good maiden hurdle at the time. I'd say there's loads of improvement to come, and they think a lot of them. So if I was to force to have a bet, it would be Dicey O'Reilly. Who do I think will win the race? Probably Dortmund Park. No, okay, Gavin, do you have a casting vote in this? I'm probably sitting too close to Patrick, but um, <laughs> I'm going to go for Dortmund Park. He, over two miles, he probably ran to about 110 in Navin. Three weeks later, he probably ran to mid-120s when he won a, a, a poor enough maiden hurdle. And the last day in Thurlis, he beat Borough Saint and Discorama. Discorama, a decent form of Christmas in Limerick. I'd be interested to see what Patrick would think of Borough Saint. He beat him 16 lengths. And also, uh, yesterday or the day before, Eddie O'Leary made a quote saying that he's a very heavy horse that is running into fitness, which I thought was an interesting comment. Yeah. So... Dorman Park's probably bad value. If you got two to one, I think it's a bet. I think that's what my football manager said to me. <laughs> <laughs> Very heavy body, running into fitness. Yeah, forever running into fitness, never mm. getting there, though. Uh, all right, Patrick, all right. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you can't really seem to have Dorman Park whatsoever, though. No, I mean, possibly, but I just think, um, 
I think our two horses' form is, is better. Uh, you know, and I mean, Carter McKay was kind of the number one choice for us in Cheltenham last year, and obviously his form tailed off, but uh, he's a horse with a lot of class. Do you think he'll stay, Patrick? I think he'll stay because he yeah. settles very well. He's, he's an absolute bust at home, and over these longer trips, a horse that settles, is it's worth an extra seven or eight pounds, you know. Fair enough. Let's move on to it's actually a great two, the Carl Dublin Steeple Chase. But what a race! Your kill coming back to two miles, and obviously Min back to course and distance where he ran so well over over Christmas. How are the pair of them? Both are well. Uh, both were a little disappointing at Christmas, to be honest. Um, York Hill, look, we his pedigree suggests three miles, and um, so we we tried it. It didn't work. He ran too keen. But what we took out of the race was how well he jumped early on. I mean, if you watch. The race. I don't know if you can practically see it on the um, on the camera because I was watching it in the stands. But over the first five fences, he's just jumped to the front. Um, you know, he's been rapid over the first few fences. So I think that'll stand him in good stead. Dropping back in trip, dropping back in trip should uh, guarantee a stronger pace, but particularly with special tiara in the race, yeah. um, and that should make him far easier to ride, which means you should be able to get more ability out of him. Uh, and it, you know, it was a big ask going into the Christmas chase on his debut for the season um, very unwilly like yeah um but you know we just we hadn't managed to get him out beforehand and we needed to to have an idea um of where we were going for the rest of the season so this is another bit of an experiment um he seems to have a horse with a huge cruising speed he's twice he's won in Cheltenham he's arrived the home bend pulling a roller yeah. um so his high cruising speed should suit and particularly around Leopardstown where there's only three fences in the last six furlongs um, and with special tiara set in the gallop, it'll be far more of a stamina test than a lot of two mile chases, and that would suit him. And he, he would be the preference. Do you think he'd run better than Min? Tricky. Uh, I mean, Min looks. Um, he was disappointing at Christmas. Um, now, obviously, Tell Us More lit him up over the first two fences. They went a million miles an hour over the first two um, before Tell Us More made a bad mistake because he was going faster than he could. Um, and then I thought Min put in some extravagant leaps on the back straight that probably took a bit much out of him you know you can't be giving fences two foot and standing up standing off three strides away um so he needs to be much better than he was at christmas but i think he has improved fitness wise as well and it's very hard to call um, it's very hard to call and is there any other danger you'd see in this well look special tiara is the champion chase winner yeah um it's his first time running in ireland in a long time uh so he sets a he sets a a, a solid bar you know he's coming back from a fall um but he's probably getting on a bit and we'd be disappointed I suppose if our younger legs couldn't carry us past him. Fair enough. Your thoughts? Uh, especially Harris, no chance. No. Ground and as Patrick said he's getting on a bit. He took his chance last March and that was yeah. his chance. You know, I don't think he'd be performing at top level again. Uh, Simply Ned I think Min will finish much further in front of Simply Ned this time. You have to remember Simply Ned has been found out year after year and all of a sudden he comes up to win a grade one. I think I think Min threw away that race really by being too keen. I think he'll finish ahead of possibly more than five lengths ahead of Simply Ned on this occasion. But I think York Hill has by far the most ability in the race. So you have to just try and gauge what York Hill is going to turn up. And I think the way he jumped in at Christmas and the fact that everything has gone well since, ability-wise, I think he's the best horse in the race. He's probably priced accordingly. It wouldn't be a race to have a bet and probably a race to watch. But... Um, I'll be really, really disappointed if York Hill doesn't win because I think he's got a significant amount more ability than Min. Chance to back the best horse in the race at five to six. Would you do it, Gav? Uh, I'd sooner get even money, perhaps. Okay, but, um, just to be greedy, um, one thing about York Hill, I'll never forget Ruby looking over at Barry Gerty and Yanworth in the in the Neptune that time. That is a fantastic horse. Uh, one thing to keep in mind if you're backing him at a short price is that, like Paul Townend's a fantastic jockey. The two times he's ridden him. Uh, York Hill has won the battle at Aintree and again the last day over three miles but this time over two miles the horse should settle a lot better so I think we're all looking for a horse to take on Altior at Cheltenham and it's either we haven't seen Duvan in a while so hopefully it's going to be York Hill Good stuff well staying on to two miles and this could be one of the clashes of the day uh, we got footpad at 1-2 to two, Petty Mishwar at 3-1 to one with Ladbrokes at the moment we're sort of 10-1 to one bar those uh, Patrick how happy are you with footpad and his preparation one of the one of your stars over Christmas in fairness Yeah I mean I've never seen a novice jump around like he did um, you know it was just a joy to watch um, you know over hurdles he was a bit like Liverpool he was just short top class um, but over fences he seems to be you know he seems to, the way he jumps it improved him again yeah. and hopefully that will have improved him past Petit Mishwar because Petit Mishwar has the upper hand over hurdles a couple of times so 
Uh, and obviously, Patima Shawar hasn't had the ideal prep in that, you know, he's obviously missed a bit of time and he's only had the one run. We have an extra bit of experience. I'd be expecting him to turn the tables. Um, on know, his hurdles for him. On his hurdles for yeah. him, yeah. So, you know, I'd be disappointed if, if, if he doesn't win. But, you know, it is a fantastic race. Yeah. It is a fantastic race. Anything beyond the top two in the Mockerby? No, I think Footpad will win. Um, yeah. I wasn't a huge fan at the start of the season. And even when he won first time out in Navin, I kind of said, well, do you know what? The form could be questions a bit, you know, Gordon Elliott's Berlaid, I think, was second and had been well beaten since. And I just wondered where, you know, would he reach the top over fences? But at Christmas, he was spectacular. I, as Patrick said, I, I've rarely seen a horse take the jumping like he has. And he was making lengths at Christmas. And uh, Petty Mouchoir has had a, you know, messy enough preparation for this race. He's coming back. Of all the first couple of favourites, surely Footpad is the most solid. Good stuff. Gavin, do you have, uh, do you have a bet in this race for us? Uh, just three to one Ladbrokes, they're the biggest price. Uh, you can go a quarter of the odds, first or second with five runners. I think each way, it looks like a free bet, doesn't it? It looks like those two will be clear of the rest. Um, I think whoever's going to win here is really going to set up for the arc at Chatham. I don't think So Royal will beat Petit Mouchoir or Footpad. Footpad has been a revelation, so I'd probably say Footpad. Good stuff. On to the uh, BHP Insurance Stars Champion Hurdle coming in at half past three. The big guy, is he back, Faheen? Yeah, okay. I mean, he is. Uh, I worked against him on Tuesday and he worked like Fahin. Um, That's you know, but he, he was the same before Christmas. I mean, his work before Christmas was exceptional and his work at the moment is exceptional. So nothing came to light. Um, you know, people talk about this mysterious bounce factor. I never really bought into it, but perhaps there is something. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you have to forgive him one, one race. And uh, we're very happy with him. And... I, I, I think he's gonna. I think you're gonna see the real Fahin again. Good stuff. Well, we thought we had it in the Morgiana, In fairness, Dave. I mean, he looked like he was right back, and everyone was very excited about it. So, are you still excited? Yeah, I, I just said before, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen here. None whatsoever. Unless you're Patrick Mullins or in the Mullins camp, you cannot, you cannot have serious faith or having a huge bet on Fahin because you just don't know. Um, I, I, I think if Fahin does come back to obviously the form we've seen him in of a couple of years ago and his Morgiana form, of course he wins, absolutely. But you know, you just look back at that race and it was just so extraordinary what happened. He was so dead, he was beaten from such an early stage. You know, it was just, it was completely baffling. Like, as, as form students, you're trying to look at a race and you're saying, well, what went wrong? Um, we were scratching our heads, so I just can't imagine what it was like for your dad and the whole team trying to figure out oh my God, what the hell happened here, you know? So I have no idea what Fahin is going to do. I really hope he wins because I think if if a, if a 100% Fahin and 100% Bouvard Air turns up in the champion hurdle, it will be the highlight of the week and it could be something extraordinary. Um, I think that Defi Desai is a better horse than Mellon. So I think Defi Desai is the biggest danger to Fahin. He's the most impressive triumph hurdle winner I've ever seen. And yeah, probably. Yeah, second most impressive uh, <laughs> triumph hurdle winner I've ever seen. Uh, you know, he 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 was he was brushing them juveniles last season. Be it they mightn't have been the best juveniles in the world out of the way. And as Patrick said, hopefully he can forgive a horse one run. I think Philip Hobbs's team are in better form now, and I think Defi Desai will finish ahead of Mellon. And I just hope Fahin comes back to the form and wins. Yeah, it'll be no, amazing. It'll be amazing action. No chance Defi Desai comes ahead of Mellon. I mean, no. he beat Bapom and Mel and Mega Fortune now. Two good horses, but I think Mellon, Mellon is improving all the way. We put a hood on him. I mean, the last day in Cheltenham, he just ran with the revs up the whole way. Yeah. He was just doing too much. So hopefully with the hood on, he'll settle better, conserve more energy through the middle of the race and finish stronger. And that will put him ahead of my tent to yours and the new one, which should put him into the right yeah. thing. I, I can't have Defi Desai ahead of Mellon anyway. But you think Fahin is on a different stratosphere to Mellon? Like? You know, different strategy to anything. Any I mean, if if, if, if yeah. Bouvard there turns up 100% and Fine turns up 100%, it's not a race. No, it's, of course it's a race. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a race. There you go. Gavin, uh, like, Fohin would just be brilliant if he turns up himself. Do you have anything to put up against him or any kind of value bet? No, he's 13 pounds without? clear on ratings, Fohin, so he wins if it's the real Fohin. I wouldn't mind standing beside Patrick while the race is on because he was saying earlier that when he jumped to second or third, he knew he was in a spot of bother, so okay. I'd love to get his advice. So you just have to track uh, him Steve, on the day. Uh, <laughs> Stevie Wonder knew he was in bother. Never yeah, mind Patrick. When they're halfway around, I'd like to ask his opinion. <laughs> Back him and running. But uh, no Fahin for me, yeah. Good stuff. Right, uh, let's move on. Any other selections on Saturday? Anything else standing out, Patrick? Uh, you're riding the bumper. Was that a bit of a um, difficult call for you? You go for Black Bow rather than... Yeah, um, definitely it was because both of them won at Lipson at Christmas. Yeah. Um, Manel on Corp put in a, a very tough performance. He's not flashy. I mean, if you look at him in the ring, he's kind of 
stout and strong um, and he only does what he has to and he's the same at home um, he only does what he has to and on the track you know I don't think you'll know until something beats him you won't know how good he is yeah um, he did a fabulous bit of work during the week um, and he seems to have improved again uh, from his second run at Christmas but Black Bow carries four pound less because he's only won one bumper yeah. so that's what swung it in the end the middle and core has to carry the double penalty Black Bow only has a single penalty um, Black Bow is a different horse. He's taller, leaner. I mean, he take the eye out of your head. He, he's, um, you know, he'd spot him going around the parade ring. And I think he was just a bit too keen at Christmas. He ran in my, in my um, hands the whole way. I jumped off down the rail to get a bit of cover and the field gravitated towards the middle of the track. So he ran a bit too keen and he did very well to keep going. Um, I think he learnt a lot there because at home he's doing everything on the bridle. And when he got to the front at Christmas and asked him to go, it just seemed to take him 100 yards to kind of understand yeah, what I was asking him to do. It looked like he was beaten on one stage, didn't he, inside yeah. the Furlong Pole? I know, I know the, the horse in front stopped a bit as well, but I just think my fella, the, the, ne the next time when I say go, he'll be gone. Good stuff. Uh, anything else for you on what is an absolutely brilliant card on oh, Saturday? Oh, loads, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I, Get your notes out now. Yeah, I I, I'm going to give The Name Escapes Me a chance in the Coral Hurdle. Um, He's down to mark a 130, and it's fascinating. Noel Mead will always talk about how he thought he was a handicap blot in that Betfair hurdle last year won by Ballyandy. That was off the mark of 139, Aidan Coleman, Coleman rolling that day, and he ran no sort of race. He's only had 11 starts in his career. And if you go back to his form of beating organised confusion in a race novice hurdle at, uh, at Fairy House, like he, he looks like he could be absolutely chucked in off 130. I'm, assu I'm assuming this has been the plan for a long time. Yeah. And it's interesting that Mark Walsh, who would have had the choice of so many in this race, rides the horse. I, I, I think he's 33 to 1. I don't think he should be 33 to 1. Noel Mead won with a similar type last year um, in Ice Cold Soul. And the other one in that race I think will run well is Tudor City. He was second in the race last year. He's five pound higher now. But, um, you know, he just likes these big handicaps. He's been trained for the race. Spoke to Tony Martin during the week and he says he's in great form. So they mean my two at huge prices against the field in the Coral Hurdle. Um, I fancy uh, in the in the two mile handicap chase, two mile one handicap chase, I fancy Blasa Coleman from the Robert Tyner stable. Just thought the front two, Tis a Mystery and Bellamy de Savola, got away from him at Christmas and Philip Henry was kind of left playing catch up and uh, I just think he's a brilliant jumper who has a big handicap in him so I could see him winning that handicap chase and I have two for England, do you want them? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Okay. I'm not going to stop you now. Yeah, I'm in full <laughs> flow. Um, I think top of the game is still well handicapped at Sandown. He's running a two mile seven handicap hurdle. I think someday he could be a very good chaser. They put chasing on the back burner for now. He's gone up three pound for finishing fourth in the Lanzarote at uh, Kempton, and nothing went right that day. If you yeah. watch the race, absolutely nothing went right. So uh, I'd be willing to give him another chance over a more suitable trip. And also at Weatherby, um, Bally Optic in a smaller field around a track like Weatherby should get into a better rhythm. I think he'll win a two forty. Okie doke, uh, Gavin. Do you have a couple of sections for Saturday? Preferably not at Weatherby. <laughs> <laughs> I tipped up off you go for the Coral Hurdle with Davy there on Monday in the Cheltenham preview thing that we do. Um, I think now at the prices, I think that's only around 5 to 1. Mind's Eye is good value at 12 to 1 with Ladbrokes. Again, they're a standout price. Um, it won very well over Christmas, over 2.5. The step down and triple suit. Henry was thinking run it in the delight, so it has to have a good chance here carrying 10 stone too. And lastly is Kilfenor in the handicap chase. It's 12, 14, 16 to 1. I think that has a bit of a squeak from one pound out of the handicap. Good stuff. Patrick? I, we have one, uh, one I, I like a lot in the two mile one handicap chase, a horse called Patrick's Park. Um, I rode him a three mile hurdle um, on New Year's and I thought he'd come home alone. Um, but he's been far too keen early on and he just hasn't stayed. Um, he won a two mile beginner's chase on good ground in the summer. So it was an experiment to see could we go further with him over fences, but it didn't work out. Um, he's coming back to two mile one. He's got a very light weight. He's got Rachel Blackmore as a champion conditional and who is fabulous to watch over a fence. Um, and I, I'm not sure what price he is. He could be 10 or 16 to 1, but uh, he will run a lot better than he did when I wrote him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, good stuff. Right, so quick one selection, one bet from Saturday. Best bet on Saturday. Quick, go, Gav. Best bet on Saturday, I would go for Mines Eye Each Way. Mines Eye Each Way. Patrick? Faheen is an unbelievable price. Absolutely. And I go for top of the game. Top of the game. Thanks for that. That's a Saturday show. Check back in here later on on Saturday afternoon and we'll be looking forward to all of Sunday's action at the Dippin' Hits.